we've seen it with some of the other teams as well. We don't want to overlook them, as you've said. And this could be a tournament where we really start to see, hang on, APAC have not only caught up here, but they are competing. And they could do much more than can compete if this carries on. First band coming in from Sandbox is going to be the Habana, focused in towards those hatches, especially when attacking downstairs, which should make that the more preferential site on this map than, say, Cash CC. Maverick also going to be taken away, so the double hard breach band coming through. That means Thatcher is available, mind you. So you will likely see him getting picked up in a number of rounds, which is why you may not see a Kai band come through here. Some teams just prefer getting that off the board full stop, so you might still see it removed away. But it's going to be that other band that I think will be interesting. Probably going to be a mirror, but we'll give it time. It's going to be another band coming in here from NIP. Going to see the Valkyrie, not too much of a surprise. Um, I spoke about it in the last map, how important information um, and informational utility particularly is. And obviously Valkyrie, the queen of those cams, um, just distributing three of them around the map at will, wherever she pleases. They can be yeah. hidden away, very difficult to find, very time-wasting. Um, so Valkyrie is going to be gone. And Maestro, oh. another informational operator, will go along with her. All right. So you're seeing the Thatcher stay in place, seeing the Mirror stay in place. You may well see both brought along multiple times throughout this game. So a little bit different to what we saw on the prior map, where things like the Mutant Mozzie reign supreme, where we had a lot of shields being brought along by NIP. It, you might see those differences start to rein in. And straight away, Thatcher picked up by Julio on the other side no mirror just yet but could get sixth picked in we're going to start on a bit of a different site as well here Tim it's going to be gym and bedroom to kick things off it is an interesting one historically we've seen this be the third choice site but it has raised uh, so we've seen a raise in popularity for it recently um, it with, with the decline I would say of CCTV and cash uh, CCTV yeah. and cash seems to have become sort of easier and easier to attack we've seen that wall getting open quicker and quicker um, and it's been difficult for teams to keep hold of so they have edged towards gym and bedroom, which sort of makes it a second choice site, which means inevitably you're always going to get teams that try to just switch it up, mix things around, and they will go there first. And that's exactly what Sandbox are going to do for us today. Mm -hmm. Dug up the stats, have a look at what was going on with the Maestro band, because I know we used to have the old trifets of, you know, Mira, Maestro, Echo. That was the thing a couple of years ago where it would always be those three, or at least two of the three being banned away. We don't really see Maestro bands all that much anymore. And here, looking at the stats, like, it's not an operator that NIP play. So maybe it's just a fear for uh, Sandbox knowing that back in the old days when they used to play this map before Giants became the dominant team on Clubhouse in the region, that they simply don't want to deal with the information game coming out there. Double hard breach ban, double info ban, just makes sense that all good things come in pairs. So let's see how Gym and Bedroom shapes up. That mirror is on side. Likely going to see that facing one out towards the Jacuzzi breach, the other one inside of Logistics looking down in towards construction. Static's just got a horrible angle there out of the garage door. He's looking to see if anybody strays past on the side of NIP. I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't oh, he looks any like joy time. from it. Nova just dipping away down the blue stairs for the time being. But these are all players that need to be picked up. Getting out on the roam like that, it's almost sort of the reverse SSG roam. It's going to waste a lot of time. And it's a mute out doing this as well with the SMG on side. Not really the operator of choice that you see doing that roam. You see someone normally like Envy Taylor on the alibi doing that. Perhaps Shy playing on the Jaeger, but here you've got one of your hard support players out on their own looking to cause trouble around the map. Fair play to him. I'm sure he'll come back up and join the team at some point in the round, just looking at what late round impact he can have essentially. For NIP, it's a big focus out towards the Jacuzzi Breach. Very common to get control of this, get control of Jim and look to plant him behind the single reinforced wall that you see between the two sites. But you've got to deal with this mirror that sits in front first and foremost. You can just see with the uh, use of our silhouette there, the exodermic charge being deployed. Impact Nade is going to be unsuccessful, and Moosey's going to find an opener onto Envy Taylor. So the NIP attack is well and underway now. The Jacuzzi wall has been open. Psycho's working from underneath, but they still haven't shut down Nova. We can see him out on the roam, and you just wonder if NIP are aware of him or not, because if not, they could get hurt on the flank, as we can see he's still uh -oh. very mobile at the minute, but he's about to run into Psycho, potentially, who mm. we can see. He's just threw in bar, but he's busy with his nades, Des, and he might not know that he's just being approached here. He gets challenged from both angles at the same time, and that is surely oh, going to be a kill. There's the down, and there's the finish. Nova not picked up on the roam and punishes NIP for it. I will give it to Sandbox. Their 2v1s across Cafe, and now in this first round, have been incredible so far. Whereas NIP have been kind of a bit solo operate. Oh, my. No way has he just killed him on a blind spray through garage door. Yes, he has. That's unbelievable. And 
Nova is going to be livid, but it's a four versus three. Pino almost losing his life out once again, but still keeps himself alive, at least for now. Static trying to swing him out. They've got a couple still out towards the west side of the map, and now one trying to pressure onto Static. Gets the down, but there's a 2v1 coming in from NIP. Make it a three versus one as Kamikaze swings in. It's a temporary three versus two, but it'll be four versus two before long, and NIP have got 30 seconds to make this work. Static was very stuck there between a rock and a hard place. Three players closing in on him, and they get that kill. Out goes the Nitro from Harper. Not going to find anything. Needs to be careful about just overextending into that corridor. The Jacuzzi wall is open, of course. Ooh. There you go, the peak round the corner. Kamikaze gets Shyle. Julio actually with a trade, taking Kamikaze down himself, but manages to make oh, yeah. amends and find that final kill. That's going to be the round to NIP. You can't even argue that, are you? Got, you ran in front of me, mate, because he was no, in front of him the whole time. <laughs> Kamikaze swung it, so... You know, oh, that. bless his soul. It started out well for Sandbox. I feel Envy getting picked out inside a gym for free was maybe a small misstep by them, not being aware of the pressure being exerted by NIP and being stung in the backside as a result. But no surprises, NIP on their preferred map have won their first attacking round. Now Sandbox step across into CCTV and Cash. The Kai being brought along here to help keep that wall locked up tight and once again, the mirror being sixth picked in. So we'll see if NIP learn their lessons from Nova there. They didn't really pick up on the roaming mute. They were punished for it, but they reacted well. Never the thought I'd say that, a roaming mute. Mm. The clearance still went well overall, I think, for NIP. They were able to get themselves a the couple of kills, only lost one man in doing so. It really was at the end of the world, but they need to just be making sure that they do find everybody that is off out on the roam. It's going to be cash and CCTV this time around, so Sandbox really staying away from that basement floor for the time being so likelihood here is we're going to see somebody trying to hold on to that garage catwalk for as long as possible we've got static just reinforcing the lower levels as we would expect the mirror has been placed on the cctv wall um, which is always an interesting one because what you tend to find you don't play um too so too much sort of boots on the ground inside a cctv as soon as they come up and start trying to breach that wall what they're going to do is they're going to punch the mirror so that it shatters and you can't see through it anymore when that happens the man in behind the shield on the cash door is likely to peek over, shoot out the mirror, and that makes it very dangerous to approach the wall to open it. So it's all a little bit of cat and mouse. It's even less so the fact that you can't get to it because you can just repel above it essentially and come from upside down, get the exothermic on and get off. The difficulty comes is that you only have two exothermics and you've got MV, MV with two impacts in his back pocket. Yep. You'll see that come through here, likely going to be the go-to play. He can remove both exothermics. They've got the ace on side, but if you have to commit two or three of those towards getting this wall open, you've only really got one for the garage wall that is also a pretty critical element to get open on this map. But with the double hard breach of ban, you're sort of forced to play into this. I think they're a little bit late potentially in getting this one opened up here. They won't be able to deny it away. And sure enough, one exothermic does the trick. As soon as it's opened, three players from NIP get straight onto drones to find out what the state of play is. Have any members of Sandbox moved in response? Where is our push needing to come in from next? It's good kind of strategical play coming out from NIP. Important as well that we uh, give a shout out to our wonderful observer. We've got Easy joining us for this map, uh, for this entire match, to be do. What a great job he's done so far, and I'm sure we'll continue to do throughout the tournament. So, welcome, Easy, and thank you for joining us in the first match. He told me he hates your voice. Did he? Yeah. I can imagine him. He hates listening to your cast for three hours. He said his ears bleed afterwards. Yeah. Shout too much. And I didn't say that. Really, what it's all about is the overtime. That's what he doesn't like. <laughs> Observer's worst nightmare. There's an ace, overtime's galore. Here comes the opening kill from Harper, though. Catch your psycho on the running through the front door. I just want to clear Easy's name. He didn't say that. He loves you dearly, really, I guarantee. Either way, one kill coming in. A couple of damage members on the side of NIP. Meanwhile, for Sandbox, all five still healthy and alive. No concerns at all. You've got Charles holding near this window, daring someone to come vaulting through as Pino trades back elsewhere. Not bad from NIP, just keeping themselves level and importantly they've got control of Garage Catwalk. Shio manages to find Julio though and no matter what NIP seem to do well, there always is another problem for them to solve. That's something Sandbox are doing well here, keeping them thinking because once you've got that East Breach and the Garage Catwalk, you really should be in a position to start thinking about getting the diffuser down but there's still definitely more work that needs to be done for NIP. You need to open this soft wall here really to get it through. They've got Muzi with the uh, impact in hand, I think waiting to bust it open but I don't know if that hit the spot. 
spot he was intending for. They've got the window to play, but they've got to vault now. Oh, no, they haven't. That's a lie. The extra third is still in back pocket. You can ignore me. They'll get this wall open up. I think they're trying to impact it off, but they miss both. And Envy's gone down. The flank comes in, but it's caught by Pino. What a fantastic read. They've got the wall opened up. There's 20 seconds still to play. And Nova has got one smoke canister left. NIP can do this, but it's going to be tight. They find a wonderful angle. And now it's all down to Nova. Another smoke comes through. He's going to watch the window. Sees the man, but can't quite do it. What a push coming out from NIP. They dealt with the flanks. They dealt with the long angles. They didn't even worry about the smoke. Beautiful attack. We're starting to see why NIP are so effective on Clubhouse here. There is no problem that they don't seem able to solve. I've got to shout something out from Pino there, Des. It was... It was only a small thing and it would be easy to miss. He was moving up garage stairs. He knew that there was one underneath in lounge that could potentially be a problem. Pino continued that push and whilst supporting Kamikaze, looking into CCTV, he was actually watching two angles. So he was aware of lounge door and he was looking out into CCTV to assist Kamikaze on the catwalk. And as soon as the push came from lounge door, he wheeled around, he got the kill. It was unreal from Pino to be able to monitor two angles like that so consistently and so effectively absolutely beautiful play from him interesting change coming in here for our downstairs defense normally you'd see quite a hunker down setup i think back to bds in europe for example you'll see him really trying to dig in arguably we've seen a mute roam already the only operator i look at there and think right site player is the kaid you could find yourself potentially here with four roamers out running around the map looking to cause a little bit of bother on the other side then it's going to be a game that we saw like we had on cafe where you've got to invest so much time in clearing out these roamers that for NIP they lost a couple of rounds attacking kitchen as a result this could play out exactly the same and sure enough you've got two or three members looking to play on the top floor here one inside a bar almost like an SSG roam without the usual operator lineup Right then, NIP, they're going to go in and look to clear this out again. We saw them do it very well in round one. They didn't pick up on Nova, but other than that, they were able to really deal with those Rome as well. So they're going to be looking for a repeat of that and quick pressure again. Psycho getting logistics hatch open immediately, looking to get that drawn in. Muzi pushing from gym and bedroom side. This is going to be rapid play from NIP. We can see the drones going in. They're going to know exactly where Envy Taylor is. He thinks about taking a little peek. He's opening up angles with the bailiff there to try and just make himself a little bit more tricky but he keeps getting forced away fine psycho though great opener for envy taylor despite the pressure that he was facing manages to hold on and keeps fighting on the top floor this is so beautiful for envy here as well because the wall is still closed behind him he can play super comfortably inside a cc and is now challenging out onto this balcony. So NIP can't play inside that on the balcony to contest the windows until this is cleared out. It's almost like the defense you see coming in for gym and bedroom, but a similar sort of style. They're working their way through the top floor. They've lost one man. Drones are all still intact bar one, so it's not too bad in terms of the intel game. But at this point, you'd much rather have your sledge alive given the site that we're playing on. You need that hammer to be opening up the floor. <laughs> Muzi just going to take out a lot of utility as he goes, and that is the top floor clear. One back. minute 30 into the round, NIP can start now working into the mid floor, thinking about the hatches, but as you say, they have lost a lot of potential for soft destruction there. They've still got an explosive grenade on the side of Muzi, but other than that, it could be tough. A couple of soft reaches from the ace, they need to use those very specifically for the angles that they want. Absolutely. Walk up, we're probably going down the hallway here. You might have one that gets placed inside a kitchen as well, and maybe not a couple to try and force them out of back arsenal. Nova needs to be careful here as that wall, or sorry, the ceiling above him is starting to open up, meaning he can no longer play on that far west side of Arsenal. I know the Malusi as well, by the way, at the very back of Arsenal, out to the far west. He's almost expecting someone to come charge again through Ash Rush Wall and make a play from there, but right now, they're focusing everything on getting this one opened up. They see a man lay down, it's all too easy for Pino to pick up Static, who was looking in towards Moto. Church is now wide open, and it's clear, at least the sandbox, where NIP are coming from. It's clear where they're coming from, and it's clear where to get the kills. Julio oh. manages to just burst into sight like an arrow just piercing through its target. He goes right into the heart. It's Muzi that's going to be shut down. Julio has the opportunity to get the diffuser down. He's going to take it, Des. He's going to stick this. He's going to be successful now then. They know roughly where he's playing. Sandbox need to make a challenge here. and have to know. He is stuck, Des. There's no real way out of this other than to fight, and fight he will. Oh. Fight one, but not the second. Shio 
able to shut the man down in a trade. Will get in and disable that diffuser, and it's a good defense from Sandbox. Almost a repeat of what, well, it was a repeat of what we saw of Muzi back on Cafe when he had the 3K into a one versus one against Nova. Just couldn't quite win that last gunfight, and it played out exactly the same here. It's good news for Sandbox. They get their first defensive round win, but now need to find a few more. A 3-3 half at least is what you're looking for here on Club. It seemed to be a bit of a hero play for me in that round to really put NIP in it at all. It was Julio just sort of bursting into sight from Moto and managing to catch Sandbox unaware that really gave them any opportunity. So I think, you know, we've got to give credit to Sandbox on that one. Other than that one moment, they pretty much had the round locked down. It was well played from them. They're going to be heading back up to gym and bedroom this time around, which was, of course, the first site of choice. They lost it. NIP were able to fairly comfortably get the win on this one. They're really enjoying these mirror six picks. They just keep on rolling, keep on coming through. Just leave NIP guessing. Is there a mirror? Isn't there a mirror? I imagine you're going to see an identical setup to before as well. One facing out here towards Jacuzzi Wall. One over looking down into construction. Just stops the attackers from being able to rush through that east side. And it can be really hard to break it unless you manage to clear stock out, which isn't always the easiest feat. It's hard to get the angle for grenades into the player that will be playing behind the mirror window. And you've also got to deal with things like the Wamai, the Jaeger, as well. So a big focus should be one, getting control of uh, Cash, or sorry, CC, to stop the player playing on the west window there. And then probably the same as before, looking to push in through Jacuzzi Wall because why fix what ain't broken? Interesting change. Second mirror window goes down here into Jacuzzi. So it's almost like they aren't anticipating an attack to come down through construction sides. See whether NIP decide to switch things up and utilize that avenue or not. For the time being, Static is still out on that side of the map on the garage catwalk. He's going to be trying to prevent quick access coming in through garage, and that's exactly what it seems NIP may well be looking for. The drones are raining in now. They'll pick him up if he's still up there on the top floor, but he's decided it's time to dip away. He's not going to be looking to face and front up to that sort of pressure for the time being. He's going to go all the way back to construction, so that basically gives a lot of that east side to NIP for free. He moves himself back and he is keeping himself mobile. NIP need to be aware of that, but I'm a little bit concerned for Static here because there's going to be a number of NIP guns moving in very quickly, very soon. He might find himself caught out if he's not careful, which is why he wants to back away now. Has to be careful of the garage player as well, who isn't currently sat on the angle itself, was on drone. That may have, I was going to say it closed off the fact that he took the swing and then stepped back in. I was like, you kind of chanced it a bit there. You should have just got out a long time ago. Finds himself stung and a good rapid entry into the building by NIP finds them an opener. I think Sandbox haven't really committed enough to trying to hold on to that east side. I think Static oh, look at was sort of like a token force out there to try and hold wow, it down, but it NIP recognised that, and as soon as they said, look, there's one man here, they know that they can get him closed down. Look how well Des, they are identifying locations now. They are singling players out and they are shutting them down. This is a great stage one from NIP, just going in, ticking boxes, clearing roamers, gaining map control. They can now start thinking about the site. Sandbox, in the last round, they did this really well too. They roamed for a minute and a half, got back to site, all five alive, killed one man, didn't really kill any drones, but it was a good roam for them. This round, totally different story. Two already going down. I think being caught out by NIP's pace. And then there's a classic APAT move, jumping out here. Envy just about getting away with his life. Harper waiting for the man to come stepping in, sees him, gets some shots through the soft wall, but isn't going to go down. You're basically looking for the colour on the other side of those holes to change to indicate there is an operator there and you just spray, and it was NIP who pulled the trigger first. So just holding down the main stairs for the time being. He knows that there's a man underneath it in bar, I think, but it's unlikely that the pressure is going to come. Just trying to find an angle there to open that mirror window up. Won't be successful this time being, but the jacuzzi has been opened up. That much is for sure. There you go, a kill from Kamikaze on the windows, and that's all thanks to that east side pressure early in the round. There's once you've got control of that, you can sit Kamikaze on the windows for the rest of the round, and as soon as the defenders try to rotate, you pick up the kills, but look at the time. 20 seconds left to go, it's time to move NIP, it's time to go, it's now or never, you got to do it inside the round, Shail gets mobile, finds himself one, but Muzi, he finds Harper, there's got to be an opportunity for Kamikaze, he decides to find the kill instead of make the plant, and that's going to be another round for NIP, 3-1, and they looked head and shoulders above there on that gym attack. They're looking very good, outside of being caught by the Romans in the previous round, that's all that Sandbox have got going for them, NIP are in full control here, on their favourite map at 3-1. I said it earlier, 
Sandbox really are looking for at least three rounds out of this half, and it doesn't look like NIP are even going to think about giving them that chance. We step back into CC and Cash, which NIP, if you remember, had a really solid attack coming through Garage. They got the uh, reinforcement opened up with the exothermic. They dealt with the angles being contested. They dealt with the flank from below. Pino with great flank watch there, and it didn't really seem to bother them. For Sandbox, I know the whole game plan is, you know, get on the flank here, cause a bit of trouble where you can, swing for those angles, play the APAC style that Latam are happy to try and contest against attack as well. But I almost want to say, sit back a bit. You know NIP is slow. Play for C4s, play for smokes, play for things that are going to sting them in the tail later in the round. Don't worry about it too much earlier on. Where we saw NIP just switch things up a little bit in that last round compared to the first attack on that site, I'm expecting to see more of the same here on CCTV. As you said, Des, it was just such a good take. Got themselves established, opened the wall, garage. Everything was there for them, and Sandbox didn't really have any answers. So I'm not sure really that NIP need to change this up and look for a construction-sided push. So I think we'll at least see at least an early attempt. Now, interestingly, Harper has chosen to just place that mirror window higher up in the wall rather than at the crouch height previously used. Of course, as you say, it was easy for the exothermic to just be placed on an upside down rappel above it. That might just change things a little bit now. Maybe so, maybe so. Harper holding out towards far west, which is not really the most usual place for a mirror, admittedly. I mentioned those C4s in back pocket. You might want to be holding on to those. For now, at least, they're going to worry about holding down the west side as well as the site itself. For NIP, I imagine, no messing about. Let's just look straight towards the site and start making our moves in. Once again, they've got this window set up on the CC wall. No one playing with the impacts, at least to sit around it and try and contest. They've got two C4s in pocket. So I'm kind of like, well, is there a point in the mirror window in that case? Like, you're not going to worry about it too much because as soon as that wall starts getting opened up, it's too late. Like, the mirror is then completely ineffective. It doesn't matter anymore. And the Taylor just trying to play aggressive against that wall. Unlikely to get the good grace of the use of the mirror to be able to assist in the bandit tricking as it will likely be punched out. But of course then there are further opportunities beyond that to try and prevent that wall being opened. And so far, Des, they've held on to it for a minute. It was 45 seconds or less last time that that wall was opened in. So NIP certainly applying more caution to it this time. Shio going to take some damage on the blue stairs there. Manages to keep himself fighting, and I think he knows that there is one on the upside down rappel. He's being very cautious. He knows he's there, but you ain't going to beat Julio on that angle. The headshot comes in, and that's going to be the opener for NIP. Yeah, real bugger as well. Julio holding a great angle. Charles no doubt saw his head, just couldn't quite react in time. They've got this full coverage on the downstairs they were looking for, which means they can force the players out. They can get rid of the bandit. He's going to have to hightail out as he gets himself blown sky high. In it comes and they clear it through. They've also got the Thatcher coming in. They're doing everything they can to deny this wall away. Tries to go for the electric charge. Very risky over the floor from below and sure enough will get blasted out from below. I believe by the Sophia. Maybe I'm wrong, but down he goes and the wall is opened. That's why you don't want to try and go again to get an electric charge down onto that wall as you might find yourself losing out i'm not entirely sure about that but we'll take it taking the kill credit <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's an interesting choice because whilst the man is down like that it can be used intel. as a camera. There is intel there. There's still the opportunity to maybe feed back information as to whether there is a push coming on the breach or not. So we'll see how that sort of progresses. But NIP looking pretty good at this point. Five versus three, 40 seconds left to go. They've got the wall open. If anything, Des, you mentioned slowing NIP down, and that's something Sandbox have managed to do. They're not as far ahead as they were last time, but they are certainly ahead in the numbers game. Beautiful um, shot from Harper, but shut down immediately on the trade from Julio. Four versus one. Nova just bounced left, right and centre here. Toxic Babe Canister goes out, but the shotgun kill was not enough for Muzi, who comes in and gets that kill. It's going to be an IP taking themselves a considerable lead here now, 4-1. I mentioned the 2v1s that Sandbox were finding on Cafe. Make it 3v1s here on Club for NIP. That's been probably the third round now. We've seen them get into a spot either towards the end of a round or relatively early on, where they're pushing a player from three different angles, a couple of windows, doorways, whatever you might look for. They've always got a way to shut a player down no matter what he does. If he gets one kill, it doesn't matter. There's two more still there to trade him out. It's really hard for Sandbox, and I think that kind of speaks to map comfort that the teams are that able to be so aggressive when they know the map, when they know what angles they can play for, it just again screams comfort. They're at four attacking rounds. This could be five. 
in which case Bank is on the way. Certainly looks like we're heading in that direction, Des, at the minute, like you say, whether they can turn that around. You just can't see. Once NIP get on the defence of Clubhouse, I'd be very surprised to see Sandbox take too much away from them, to be honest. So, right now, very important round coming up for Sandbox Gaming. They need to get the basement locked down. They did it back in round number three. It's the one site that they've won so far, despite Julio getting the diffuser down. Mm. It was all really NIP's best effort was a flurry of kills from Julio just sort of in injecting himself into sight from mortal effectively and just catching Sandbox unawares. But Sandbox reacted well, got themselves in a nice 2v1, able to close out the round. So NIP, they need to do things a little bit differently. For me, I think losing that opening kill to Envy Taylor on the roam, allowing Sandbox back to sight and playing 4v5 onto site after losing a minute and a half, it mm. was just all a bit too much, especially losing Pino on the sledge. It was. So the big challenge this time is, can they, you know, close down these Romans sooner? They know they need to go to the top floor and clear them out. Well, not that they, they don't have to, but that's kind of been their go-to tactic so far, rather than saying, right, push blue, push dirt, whatever we might choose, and try and make the plays happen. Here, it looks like, again, it's going to be another full top floor clear. So not losing out a man or two early on is going to be critical for the side of NIP. Let's see them shut these Romans down. Still got a little bit of setup work going on for Envy Taylor there as he uses the bailiff to create himself a little rotate. Exactly the same position as we saw him playing in last time with the alibi. Ooh. Takes the challenge but takes a lot of damage this time. NIP, they are not going to be fooled again by Envy One. Taylor. Pino manages to find his partner in crime static. He's taken out and Envy Taylor has no choice but to drop away here. Harper is still alive in the bar. Shio out on the roam as well. There is a huge roam presence from Sambo here but you just feel like NIP they are creeping 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 forward and taking map control inch by inch I love how there's two Thunderbirds just sat together and Envy has just sprinted through them all and gone from like 40 HP basically straight back up to full. Now he gets himself back out on the roam. It's like a it's like a battleship essentially with like planes returning in or aircraft carriers, I guess, back to station, refuel. And I like it's not two. It's all three Thunderbirds sat together just for the roamers to top back up again. Wicked. I, I love stuff like that. It's, it's yeah, really it's cool. an interesting little setup, as you say, just there as a little gauntlet for them to run and just pick up all that extra health. Now then, top floor is pretty much in the control of NI. They're going to start working towards the mid floor. Kamikaze are going to open Dirt Tunnel as well. I like to see this. Let's add another layer to that attack. You don't want that single sided push. We saw how Sandbox dealt with it last time around. So let's mix it up. Let's give them something else to think about. Envy Taylor just trying to use those vertical angles against him, and they need to be careful here. Envy Taylor, so mobile, Des. He's just causing an absolute nuisance of himself. Harper able to find Julio. Pino manages to find. <laughs> Kill from Harper! Who was Second that? in the round and absolutely destroys Kamikaze, but he's stuck, Des. He's stuck and he's shut down by Muzi. 45 seconds. Harper has definitely just broken his wrist. What a okay. flick as well. It was unbelievable. But for NIP, it's still a numbers advantage for them. Nice shot or not, they've still got the lead and are in control here. Nova, yet to really find many kills on this map outside of a TK, arguably upstairs when his, when his teammate was down. Envy Taylor it was. Shile also needing to look to go big. It's been a quiet map for several of the heroes on Sandbox, at least those that shone back on Cafe and in come NIP. 15 seconds on the clock, a double drop inside of Moto. I'm not sure they're too aware about Charles hitting here inside the corner, juiced up to the high heavens as well. He can't win a gunfight. Pino finding a 3K. Nova needs to find himself a kill back onto the other side here. Something to shut it down. Must know there are two inside here. They know where he is. Pino finds a 4K. What a massive half for NIP going five and one. This is certainly more of what we expected to see out of NIP. Get them back on their map, get them back on their playground, and they are just absolutely messing Sandbox up at the minute. They are really taking them apart. 5-1 at the half and move on to defence. This could be a really quick map for NIP to get themselves back into it. And I always say this in a best of three days. I think whoever wins that second map has a little bit of an innate advantage there in that you just carry that momentum forward. You know, Sandbox's first map win will feel like a long time ago at that point, especially when NIP have come in and played like they have in the second map. Going into bank is not going to be easy for them. No, I think I still lean towards NIP taking this 2-1 if it does go to bank, as much as it's a pretty balanced map for both teams. It's where it comes down to an even playing field and not knowing the map like the back of your hand, it not being the favourite that you've played several times recently. 
that's where really I think I give NIP the lean, especially on a map like this and my sandbox had the advantage on Cafe. That kind of goes out the window once we get to bank. But Tim, we've got to get there first. Sandbox are now stepping into the attack. And looking back at Cafe, it was an attacker leaning map. Both teams being more successful generally on the attack. NIP had three rounds and Sandbox just cleared things out in their attacking half. Let's see how they do with a couple of rounds of attack first or if NIP just closes this out like seven and one right now. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I think we will see some very strong defences coming in here um, from NIP. We're going to see them defending down in basement to begin with. There's a large Rome presence, Psycho, Pino, Muse, and that is not a trifecta of names that you really want to hear out of yeah. the Londres. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, they're clear, got a lot better as well. So, you know, they're in that mood of, okay, Rome clear, playing Rome, whatever else it might be. They know what it is they're looking for here as well. For Sandbox, it could be a direct to site sort of vibe. They're already getting themselves inside a kitchen and saying, yep, don't worry too much about the top floor for now. Envy inside 20 shot. seconds, already looking to get this floor opened up. Part of that leaning in towards being able to deny away any C4 players that might look to play below, but also to make sure they can very comfortably open up this hatch, just in case they're worried, for example, about Psycho playing with those impacts to deny any charges that go down on towards the hatch. You have got Pino above, C4 in hand looking towards the hatch and can deny away any hard breach that gets put onto this hatch. We can see there's a lot of floor opened up in the kitchen there, so that's going to make it very difficult for anybody to play underneath. But as you say, they're not really trying to play it from that direction at the minute. It's more about Pino. Pino. He is the man above him, but I'm not sure he, he knows. knows the direction. He certainly does out because the Nitro, it's detonated mid-air. And somehow, Sandbox, they managed to keep themselves at a full man count there. The drone is on him. Pino knows that he's been spotted. He knows the information's there. The utility's raining in. He's going to hold on, Des. He's nearly halfway through the round. He wants to waste time he wants to keep them out of kitchen and that's what he's doing right now that hatch is still closed this is great play from Pino on the mute he's not being pressed from anywhere else as well either I mean Sandbox that's the second time they've now concussed him out the whole hatch goes white so he can't see anyone on the hatch and should lose it out but no Shile can't oh, quite no, see him no, in no, time no. Pino finds it hatch stays in fact the hatch gets open at the same time so they've doubled up here with a bit of a distraction up on the hatch sure they pay the price of Shile but the hatch is open no use of them because they can't play through it as long as Pino is sat above that's the thing it wasn't worth sacrificing that life of Shile to get the hatch open because Pino's still in place you needed the kill onto Pino, because as you say right now, Kitchen is a no-go while Pino is up there. Kamikaze, he's going to be holding on to the dirt tunnel, and honestly, I love this defense from NIP. So aggressive, Des, and they're just really holding on to those important channels. Sandbox have had no answer to this so far. They're still droning with less than a minute to go. Kamikaze is not for being moved. He's used all his toxic babe canisters, but he's going to just root his feet in here and hold on to that shotgun. For now, swings, gets a bit of a blast down to Nova, who's down to 40, but no kill to be found. Elsewhere, Pino gets Envy. So he's still the troublemaker above. Why have they not pinched him through Jacuzzi Wall, for example? There we go, finally an A comes in. He can't see the angle because the hole is so tight. Can't see into the window, but it's taken two minutes and 35 seconds to unseat someone in Narnia, for all intents and purposes, the other side of the map. Judo playing downstairs. C4 in pocket, waits for the drop. In comes one on the drop, but they don't know that he's here in the back corner. It's a one versus three for Harper. NIP will close out this round. We go to six and one, and it's looking like an NIP clean out here, Tim. Fuse it down on the ground. There's absolutely nothing that Harper can do in that situation. And that round was won by Pino. Simple as that. Kept himself alive fantastically up in logistics. It's a completely different style of holding on to the bottom floor. It wasn't a roam so much on the top floor as it was, I'm going to keep that kitchen hatch closed. That was an anchor. When it gets opened, I'm going to keep you from going through it. And it's exactly what Pino did, getting himself kills, both in defending the hatch, but also in preventing its use as well. Fantastic from NIP. Psycho holding on to Dirt Tunnel was a big part of it as well. Love to see it. That was a masterclass of holding on to Church and Arsenal. It was beautiful. And now they get to go to gym and bedroom. It's looking dicey for Sandbox. They need five wins in a row to send it through to overtime. And that's assuming they can find wins over there as well. It's not feeling too... Uh, it's not feeling too likely, is the best way to put it right now. It's not looking to go in Defend their favor. Let's see how this setup goes. So looking out towards NIP. 
a couple of roamers on there looking towards Psycho and Kamikaze, maybe holding out towards the east. The Echo, an interesting one. We spoke about that Intel operator bands being the Valkyrie and the Maestro. They're bringing along the third choice that you don't see all that much these days. More specific teams like to use it. I'm thinking of like Empire. I'm thinking of Team Secret, Kendrew specifically. G2 have run it a few times. Again, definitely not a super popular operator, but still used in niche cases, which I think is a good sign of the operator is in a pretty good place. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't want to see a cookie a cookie cutter five every single time. We like to see those differences. We like to see those operators being brought in and out. So we're going to have the top floor of gym and bedroom. It looks like there's going to be much more attention paid towards the east side. If you remember, Sandbox, they just sort of put a token force over there of Static on his own, and it just wasn't enough. There's NIP just went and absolutely cleared him out of there, no problem. We've got Muzi just on the red stairs. Julio in CCTV. Pino joining them inside of cash. It just sent the message that NIP are not going to give up east side too easy because they don't want the pressure from the windows. Here we go. I mean, for Sandbox, they've played this Roma a couple of times themselves. They should be knowing what to do. And it's the same thing NIP did, you know, push your way in through garage pretty quickly, get straight up there and try and close out the rotation from red back out towards site or into construction, and you work your way forward from there, hopefully having picked yourself up a single kill. For now, a lot of the work seems to be on the downstairs or the stairways. You had Envy playing off on the south window, you had Static playing on the main stairs here, who, worth mentioning by the way, hasn't had a great time this game. He was 4-1 and one on entry back on Cafe, here being a little bit quieter. Psycho's all the way down in the basement. He has been picked up by a drone, I believe just a couple of seconds ago but I'm not sure exactly what Sandbox are going to do about it because time is ticking they're over a minute into the round now and they're not really keen it looks like on sending anybody down there I think they're more in more content in just sort of holding the stairways and not allowing him back up from the basement to cause a nuisance of himself but as we know Psycho it's not really always your choice how much of a nuisance he is he's going to manage to just scurry away there get himself back up to the top floor he'll support that east side defence we're halfway through the round and no great control gained by Sandbox yet. They've got the East Breach open, but they haven't moved into that East side. They haven't started to move players out of cash and they haven't really pressured anybody inside a bathroom or from Jacuzzi Wall just yet. Looking a little bit stalled out overall, really. It's one of those where they're not quite sure what the next play is. Apparently killing someone from below is a great play to make, though. Kamikaze getting caught on site. Unfortunate as well, because a few steps to the right, and he was probably far enough onto the concrete that he wouldn't have died from that nade. These things happen. A good kill from Static coming in from below. Five versus four. Going well so far for NIP, you feel, despite that loss early on. It's more about the time here. We've got the smoke canisters coming out. We've got the utility being used just to try and prevent the push coming forward. Psycho's going to be able to move through that. This could be important. <laughs> it's worth taking the damage as he finds the kill completely unexpectedly there. Psycho onto Harper and NIP with 30 seconds left to go have dealt what could be a hammer blow to this attack. They've still got the yokais on side. They've still got themselves a spot where they can chuck impacts in and maybe do enough damage to scare someone off. You know, for Sandbox, it's looking a bit dicey. They get Psycho, though, who was low HP. They've killed the Yokai player as well. The Echo is gone. Nova's getting the plant down. A one versus three. Muzi has got to do it all. He's seven and two so far on the map, but this needs to be the clutch of the day from him. It's not to be. Nova plants. He finds himself two kills, and Sandbox hold on for at least one more round. It's all falling apart there for NIP. They were in such a commanding position. Psycho just able to get them a great kill on the flank through Jim and Sandbox somehow managed to just wheel around, find a couple of kills and turn things on its head and you just feel that that's exactly what they needed at this point. I'm surprised a little bit that we haven't seen a tactical timeout brought along by Sandbox. They've been facing map point now, they only have two rounds on the board but they continue going. Absolutely. Well. Let's see how things play out. I'm still thinking that the four rounds climb is a bit too high for Sandbox. You know, they're not quite triathlete runners just yet. We'll have to see how map three goes when we get there. Assuming, of course, we do get there, but I can see NIP closing this out in the next couple of rounds once they've rotated through the necessary sites to get back down into basement if needs be. For here, at least, it's going to be Cash and CC. A pretty dug in defense coming out. The Kaid featuring once again the Wamai on side two. No mirror, though. Something we did see Sandbox using a lot. NIP not quite buying into the same idea. Certainly all smiles on the side of Sandbox still, which you like to see. You know, you've got to be enjoying things to, to win them. So they 
may have an opportunity to fight back in. We'll see. It's going to be 6-2 as we stand at the minute. As we said, CCTV and Cash will be our next site of choice. Last time around, it was NIP that were able to get the win on this site. Oh, no, sorry. We haven't seen them defend it yet. I'm thinking about the last time they attacked it um, in which they were able to get the win. But we're going to see them come out with the defence and see if they can do anything differently. It looks like it's going to be a bit of a focus on Garage for them. Um, but ah. an interesting difference in how they're going to hold on to Garage. Instead, they're going to play the player down in lounge and Muzi, for the time being, he's on that basement floor. Just looking to make a nuisance. Now he's back up onto the catwalk. Yeah, just trying to get a bit cheeky there in case any drones come rifling in. You'll see there's some things like Oregon if you're defending basement. Players will play on the north side stairs, kill a drone, then fall back down to site. It's free real estate. You get to kill a drone and you don't lose your life for it. Why wouldn't you take that wherever you can? So yeah, back up on catwalk and I'll be sitting there much prettier and safer than he would be down on the floor of Garage. Oh, Another big, oh, oh. This, this is the third kill that Static has got like this in this series. Might even be four, because I think he got one on Cafe. It could have been two, but I know he's got at least two on this map so far. These nades from below, it's not conventional entry play, but it's entry play all the same. Doesn't matter. You get that open and if anything, he's done it without risk. No challenge from Pino able to be made onto Static and that leaves us very quickly five versus for Psycho is going to be a pivotal player here on this defence so and it's something that Sandbox really do have to deal with if they don't move Psycho out of his position he's going to continue just rotating back and forwards into Garage and he's going to make a real nightmare for them they're not going to be able to aggress in now then Static sees oh. him and gets the shots that is the defence opened up from Sandbox that is what they needed and now it's time to start powering forward putting the pressure on Muzi can not continue to play that aggressive now that Psycho's gone. No surprise we see him drop down to the basement to try and escape and it's going to be all on the two defenders in sight for the time being to try and hold on to things. <laughs> Kamikaze just like Can't slow. Peak that. No, he, he didn't even peak, he like slows peaked it. He kind of slowly stepped out and then kind of edge uh, do a go do or not. And then I think <laughs> for Charlie was like, is he really just standing there and took a few free shots onto him? Moosey finding one back onto Envy at the very least but you feel that pressure I'm starting to build up on NIP. A couple of members slightly low on HP, but now you've got to deal with okay, the roaming Muzi, who might give you a little bit of a headache. I think that's something that Sandbox had failed to recognise earlier in the round, was the fact that Muzi had disappeared, oh, shadow. but they now know exactly yeah, where he is. Nova wasn't sure whether it was bar or bathroom, but as Muzi tries to make that push, he certainly sees him. Muzi's managed to escape down the main stairs, back into the basement though, and he's going to continue okay, to try and be a difficulty here. here, but they're using the utility against oh, them. No. Static's got the shield in front of him. He knows where Muzi's coming from. He's going to win this fight nice and easy. Three kills on the round, two left to fight. Mind if he can start pushing up the rear stairs, the rear stairs, Kamikaze, he will find Nova, but it's now one versus three, it's all up to him, shut down as Shio finds a double, that's going to be Sandbox taking another round, but mm. now got that difficulty of heading back to Church and Arsenal. If they get over this round though, suddenly things get very interesting, and I, it's almost like a cast of curse, in fact it was, I said Static, you know, not having a great game, his entry's not been good compared to the 4-1 that he had on Cafe, his kills haven't been up there, and then he walks up and finds himself a 3k in the round with Shile picking up the last two. It was a good round, but a lot of it was on individual members pushing into key positions, namely Static, with a freebie from below, fighting the player around the back of the shield that clearly NIP just weren't ready for someone to come through the stage soft wall. It's one of those. And I think we'll have a brief moment here as well to get some tech issues sorted out. As I've seen a member of NIP has dropped out for a second. The big question now for Sandbox, in my mind, is... Or for NIP, rather, actually. I was going to say it's for stat line to have. For NIP, if they win this one, they go 6-0 and zero on Clubhouse in September. So, again, not a bad stat line to have. But they've got to stop a resurging sandbox here. They've had the time to chat. It is down on the site that they've already won once here on the defensive half. They can close things out here and now. Otherwise, I get the sense that overtime is on the way. Don't say it, Des. Don't say the word. Not yet. We've got a few more rounds to go. Kamikaze deploying a shield immediately inside a church. That's going to allow the player that plays inside of Blue Corridor to rotate back in safely and also challenge onto Motor Door. So for me, this looks already like a setup potentially that is going to revolve a little bit more around holding onto the bottom floor than it is fighting from the top floor. Yeah, I mean, on the sheer case of seeing a mute, uh, sorry, a smoke, a Goyo, and a Mira just scream sight play, right? Plus a shield being brought along too, as we've already seen placed down. I guess where I'm 
not so much nervous, but somewhat concerned. It's so often you'll see like a stack of ADSs placed inside of blue on the back of the generator. It's why it's called stacks sometimes. And without the Aegir on side, you're relying solely on the Wamai's, and you need those to be placed elsewhere. If Psycho's playing in here by himself, okay, it's not going to be the end of the world. But just keep a close eye on that. I'm keen to see where these grenades fly in from the Iana and the Sledge. Straight into the action phase then. We've got Muzi on blue stairs at the moment. Window's going to be opened up behind him. And he's going to dip away. He's not going to want to throw his life on that one. Jail just raining a couple of shots in. Just a little shot across the bow. Just forced that guy away. They were likely aware of his presence in and around that area. We can see how quickly Sandbox are moving in here. There's Static already ticking off that step one, essentially, of clearing out top floor. He's in there. Boots on the ground. Job done. He's now drawn in ahead of him into the mid floor. And it's going to be a matter of 10, 15 seconds before Sandbox recognise mm. that there are no defenders anywhere other than sight, and that is the big difference from NIP this time around. There is going to be no vertical pressure from them. They are relying solely on locking down the site from the site. If you're wondering where the fifth man was, he is inside of dirt. It's Kamikaze position right at the very top of it as well, just waiting to see if that wall does get opened up, because if not, you can afford to play around there. C4 coming out as Julio onto MV Taylor. The sledge is removed. That's not the operator you want to be losing, although you can now turn and look towards the breaching rounds for the ace to start getting that floor opened up. Great player there to start things off from Julio, as you say, just maximising that utility. We're going to have hatches getting opened up now. Harper's just going to give a little bit of access into blue corridor there, maybe make it a little bit more difficult for them to feel like they can hold on to that, but for the time being, they will remain. I think we've just got Pino off to the left of this location, if I'm right in thinking. Um, no, he's a little bit deeper into the map now. Muse just going to be holding on to that blue corridor mirror, but just conscious of the kitchen hatch that's been opened as well. Is he going to take a peek? No, he thinks better of it, and it's a good job that he did. Otherwise, Shio likely has that locked down. Oh, oh that could be big. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. He's got three. He's got three, and he can pick one. it back up again. It's okay. We can all relax and breathe a sigh of relief, as I'm sure Sandbox are as well. Not going to lose out that one. All the hatches have been opened up, of course, again, slightly limited on what floors they can open up. And with that one Selma in back pocket, they could look towards getting that onto the church wall, but they'll have to clear the mute jammer off first. Here comes Shire. Which side is the man going to come on? He's looking towards the left, sees the head, goes for the spray, but can't quite find it. Oh, goes for the spray. LMG, OP, finds two kills, a second one through the soft wall. That's unbelievable that Shire has picked that up. Childs opened them up like a can opener there. The first one, you got to say, there was a little bit of luck involved just in the movement of the Goyo across his scope as he was already firing, but then the long shot through to Church was absolutely wonderful. Oh, NIP managed to find themselves two, though. Three versus three now, 10 seconds to go. It's going to be a hatch drop. Harper has the fuser in hand. It's all about Nova on the cover. Kills come in either oh direction, and Nova has to oh, hold down. To it. It's been downed. It's 1v1 time runs out. NIP do just enough to scrape themselves through Clubhouse in the very last seconds of that round. Woo! Spicy. I mean, for a second, it looked like a sandbox comeback, but we have now seen both teams win their preferential map and their win streaks continue again. Nine for sandbox.